Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's service. It is always a pleasure for us to fellowship and connect and share the Word of God. And thank you so much for always joining us. A kind reminder, we are open on site for physical worship. We are at the youth hall and we are also in the main service. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. We'd also like to see you join us physical. Let us now begin this service by lighting the candle together. We light this candle to remind ourselves that God is the light of the world. In the beginning, the world was without form and shape. Darkness was hovering above everything. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And so we are experiencing chaos in the world through poverty, through GBVs, through all social ills. And we are lighting this candle as a prayer that God, in the chaos that we are witnessing in the world today, please restore calm and order and be the light. Let us pray together. together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we now worship God in song. Beautiful God, laying your majesty aside. You reached out in love to show me light. darkness into light Caught up in grace 
and we find now our scripture reading from Philippians chapter 3 from verse 17 to verse 18. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Paul writes to the people of God in a place called Philippi. And Paul is writing this book when he was in prison. He was in prison because there was opposition against Christianity. And also there was opposition against him because he was preaching. So he was in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus. But that did not stop him from being a follower of Christ. Paul is one man that as you read his writings, you realize that he was content with suffering for Jesus. He was content for suffering from, for his faith. And so Paul was then in prison. But when you listen to his writings, when you read his writings, you realize that Paul at no point complains about being in prison. But rather he talks about the joy that he has for suffering for Christ. Oh, what a beautiful gentleman Paul was. Paul had faith that whatever happens to him, whatever is it that inflicts pain on him, is nothing as compared to the joy that is in the Lord. And so in chapter 3 of the book of the Philippians, he is writing to thank them for holding on to the faith that he has always taught them. And in chapter 3, he talks about the fact that he doesn't have confidence in the flesh. He doesn't have confidence in the things of this world. But he has confidence in Jesus Christ. And regardless of what happens to him, he will always hold on to the cross. And so now he places himself as an example. And he said to these people, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, as you have us as model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. So Paul says, you have seen me live my life. You have seen me and my friends model in front of you the life of Christianity, the life that is pleasing to God. So follow us as we have taught you. So Paul, in our day and age, we can, we can call him a role model or rather an influencer. Now an influencer, as many of us know, is someone who will influence people people to go in a certain direction to champion the certain cause or used by brands to help them get masses to buy their products so we are on social media most of us on instagram there are influencers when you look when you go to tiktok there are influencers facebook influencers twitter there are influencers and so paul was an in christian influencer of the time so paul says to them you have seen us, not just you have heard us. You see, it's easy for us to say good things, but on the other hand, do the opposite. So Paul says to them, you have heard me say good things about Jesus, and you have also seen me say, uh, live my life as someone who already knows Christ. So, for I have also told you that many People, in verse 18, live as enemies of the cross. So Paul, when he mentions that people live as enemies of the cross, Paul basically is saying they are doing exactly what they should not be doing. One, they refuse to accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Two, they are refusing to love God and love their, uh, <clears throat> their neighbors. Three, their lives are are not lives of people who care for one another. And so, Paul then says to them, they are enemies of the cross. And sometimes, friends, we can be enemies of the cross. We do not just become enemies of the cross by when we curse people. By how we live our lives. 
Because I should not be standing here preaching about the risen Christ and preaching about how Jesus wants us to live our lives. And when you look at my life, it's the total opposite of what I'm preaching about. And so our minds need to be filled with Christ. Our hearts need to be filled with Christ. Our actions need to be a reflection of Christ. And so we also live as enemies of the cross when we continuously sin and do not even repent from our sins. And so Paul says, you have seen me. I have influenced you. Follow my example. And when you follow my example, other people will follow your example. And when other people follow your examples, other people will follow. So it becomes a movement that is of impact. And so, like us as people call the Methodist, we are influenced by John Wesley. And John Wesley taught us or continues to teach us that there is no holiness, but social holiness. And this simply means that we are not going to be confident and comfortable with the fact that we are okay when our neighbors are not okay. So social holiness then speaks to the whole community taking care of one another and considering the needs of other people. So we have seen the example by Paul. We have seen the example by Jesus. And the question is, why? Should we not follow this? Or rather, what's stopping us from following their examples? And if there's something that's stopping you from living as someone who knows Christ, let's pray about it. Ask God if it's friends. Ask God to give you strength to walk away from them so that you and I live as children of the cross. And so we are on a journey towards the cross where Jesus Christ is going to go to the cross and take our sins on our behalf. The only thing that we can do is to turn away from our sinful life as a, as a token of gratification to God to say, God, thank you for taking my sin away. And so because you've done the work, I am not going to sin anymore. Because when I continue to sin, I become an enemy of the cross. And I pray that my dear beloveds in the Lord, we live our lives as people who know Christ, who has met Christ, and who are comfortable with what God has done for us. May we use this time to reflect on our lives and turn away from that which we need to turn away from so that we are in a relationship with God, so that we are saying thank you to Jesus for taking away our sins at the cross by our actions, by our speech. And let us pray. You are Alpha and Omega. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for walking the journey with us and for us. Thank you for taking away our sins. Because you are the ultimate sacrifice. You are the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. We couldn't have done the work without you. And we still cannot do it without you. And so help us, dear Lord, not to be like the people in Jerusalem who instead of receiving you, they crucified you. Instead of acknowledging you as the Messiah, they instead rejected you. And so, Jesus, we pray that in this moment, we accept you and we fix our relationship with you. And we turn away from our sins. Some of the sins, Lord, will be difficult for us to turn away from. But Holy Spirit, empower us to live a life that is pleasing to you. Strengthen us, Lord, as we seek to be your servants. Strengthen us as we seek to speak what you would like us to speak. Strengthen us as we seek to live a life that is pleasing to you. Father, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, friends. And let us now bless each other with the words of the benediction.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.